So we're about to uh, tuck in and have some lunch. Um, this is our favorite local restaurant. We actually don't have to say the names of any dishes here because we always order the same three things. Um, so they just ask us, Iangama, uh, the usual, and uh, give us these three. Yeah, the uh, fish fragrance eggplant is one of my favorites. Despite the name, it doesn't have any fish or even taste like fish. Um, it has a more of a kind of a sweet sauce over the eggplant with undertones of a kind of pickled um, spiciness from the fava bean um, fermented chili paste that they infuse it with. Being vegan in China is actually much easier than you might think. I think the main challenge actually comes down to knowing enough Chinese to be able to ask if there are any animal products in the food that you're eating. So here are a few phrases to help you do just that. While this technically means I only eat vegetarian food and not vegan, it's such a widely understood phrase that it is useful when followed up by No milk, no eggs. Don't use animal oil. So today we're going to celebrate the first plant-based meat which was actually invented in China 2,000 years ago and is now eaten all over the world. So let's go! meat we were talking about is tofu and since being in China we've found so many different varieties. You've got your soft tofu, firm tofu, smoked tofu, uh, tofu skins, all different types uh, which you can do multiple different kinds of dishes with. So the tofu we've got here we just bought firm tofu and this is a great meat substitute uh, for multiple dishes and we're going to show you a recipe with it later. We've also got a uh, tofu skin or tofu cube, which is great for chopping up into thin strips which creates a high protein noodle, one of our favourites. Tofu was invented during the Han Dynasty in Anhui province over 2,000 years ago. It is made by curdling the milk of soybeans. Many tofu historians suspect that Northern Han Chinese witnessed cheese-making techniques from Central Asian tribes. As Han people had no prior experience of using cow's milk, it's possible that these encounters inspired them to experiment with soybean milk. <laughs> it smells like a pizza bread. Let's go. 
So a plou jia mo is a typical northern snack, which is basically like a, a meat bun. Um, but what we just had was a cai jia mo, which is a um, vegetarian version of that. So instead of meat, you've got um, tofu skin, shredded cucumber, and carrot in there. This tofu skin snack was delicious, but now we want to show you a truly local delicacy. We're heading to a restaurant that specializes in dou hua, a soft, unpressed version of tofu popular in Sichuan. This is dou hua mian, which is made from dou hua, which is tofu, um, created after the beans have already floured, and mian is noodles, so floured tofu noodles. Now it's got loads of peanuts and coriander, spring onion, and of course it's sitting on the dou hua, the kind of watery floured tofu, so let's give it a try. That's actually really good. Okay, so this is Hong Tang Dou Hua, which is Dou Hua with a, a brown sugar syrup over it. And we first ate this uh, as a street food in Fuzhou, which is in the southeast of China. And we've been looking for it here ever since. Um, so in the southeast they like to eat it sweet, but in the north they like to eat it salty. And here in the southwest they like to eat it spicy. But this is uh, my favourite way, the sweet way. Ta I think it tastes like rice pudding, but Joe thinks it tastes like porridge. But porridge with golden syrup. Yeah, so good. What you got there? Sweet dou hua, smashed dou hua. This one is served chilled and it has a syrup over it, but it's very subtle. It's not so intensely sweet as the brown one. I think this is perfect for a hot day. And I think this is how it's served in Hong Kong during the hot summers. It has a kind of rose taste to it. I think it's got rose water in it. And goji bezels. Mm. For our next food stop, we met up with Yu Jia, a professional foodie and translator of books in the heart of Chengdu. She introduced us to a true hidden gem, Rooftop Cherry Garden. The centerpiece of this meal was dou hua, made from soybeans and black beans. This was served inside a Guizhou style sour pot. What, what's the difference between the... Uh, from different beans. Ah, okay. Uh, the black one is from black bean. Mm, okay. <laughs> is it the same like uh, dou shi? Uh, no, 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 no. It's good. Like, you know, the, the ingredients, mm. the way you make it, and uh, maybe some key uh, spice you are using, so mm. that's it. It's quite quite simple and mm. yeah. mm. uh, mm. uh, Should I give you some time? Actually, the mantra is really good as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's mm. like lao mian. Mm. Sourdough. Sour. Sour. Mm. It's actually Sour. Chinese sourdough. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alongside this was dou fu gan, firm smoked tofu and a variety of delicious seasonal mushrooms whose earthy flavours provided the perfect counterbalance to the sour and spicy mane. 
taste combination of yeah. time and nature. Yeah, knows is the the best. The best one, yeah. Eating this seasonal meal reminded us just how balanced, flavorsome, and delicious Chinese food can be. Tofu is packed with calcium low in cholesterol and easy to digest, making it a super healthy, complete protein source. With the shift to a mostly plant-based food system necessary to ensure a sustainable future, we hope that tofu continues to rise in popularity around the world. And now, to give you a bit of inspiration, here is a local, authentic tofu dish that we love to cook. The dish we're going to show you today is Ma Po Tofu, which translates to pockmarked grandma's tofu. The story goes that Mrs. Chen had a restaurant in the center of Chengdu and she was very famous for her tofu. It was very popular with locals and the other tofu sellers in the area were so jealous that they gave her this mean nickname uh, because she had smallpox when she was a child so her face was all scarred. But look who's winning now, Mrs. Chen. Let's get into it. Bring five dried shiitake mushrooms to a boil. Rehydrate for 10 minutes. Carefully cut a block of firm tofu into bite-sized cubes. Remove mushrooms and allow to cool. Set mushroom water aside for later. When cool, remove stems and squeeze out excess water. Fine dice. How are you feeling after chopping those mushies? A little bit dried. Do you want to change out? Yeah, let's do it. Next part, chilies. So two different spices we're using in this are um, pickled chilies. And the other spice we're using are Sichuan peppercorns, which are indigenous to Sichuan, obviously. And they have a citrusy aroma, and rather than making your mouth burn like a chili pepper, they make it tingle, they give it a numbing feeling, or ma la, sort of numb spice, as Chinese people call it. Chopped ginger, garlic, and pickled chilies. Dry fry Sichuan peppers on a medium heat. They should smell aromatic and smoke slightly. Grind. Take a bowl, potato starch water. Stir out the lumps. Heat salty water in a wok. Gently add tofu. Heat to get rid of pungent bean flavor. Before the water boils, remove and drain tofu. Heat oil in a wok and add mushrooms. Cook for at least five minutes. Don't burn them. Add other chopped ingredients. Stir in doubanjiang, fermented fava bean paste. Add your saved mushroom water. Bring sauce to a boil and add cornstarch bit by bit. Finally, add tofu. Plate it up and sprinkle on your Sichuan pepper. Use sparingly as it's very powerful. So good. So this is best had with rice and you don't really need anything else. This is a meal in itself. And let's have a little taste test. Let's have a look. That's a good one. You've done a good one, Jay. And you? Yeah, those mushrooms. The chopped mushrooms really help. Is that the mushrooms are chopped in the mm. Yeah, the mushrooms bring like this really nice earthy taste to it. And then you've got the numbing spice just swirling around your mouth. What's and the tofu then, like? Yeah, let's try the tofu. Oh, that's a big chunk. Mm. really creamy, really good. So this one is a success. Mm. Very good consume. 
They're changing the crops over at Mr. Jay's. Soon that'll be a full blown cornfield, won't it? Seasons are changing. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we're sharing more information about veganism in China, as well as podcasts, articles, and videos covering a wide range of China-related topics on our Substack. We're also sharing the written recipe for map or dofu, so head over there now and get cooking. Links are in the description. See you soon, bye!